Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to ask a question. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. I have used Card Conduit multiple times already. I always use them to get the best value for my extra cards. I get fair prices for my cards and they save me tons of time. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They give you the best price for your cards. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. Card Conduit also optimizes buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of the card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. To get the latest updates on Playing With Power, be sure to check out our social media. Follow us on Twitter, check us out on Facebook, and find us on TikTok. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Kevin, piloting Joyra, Weather Light Captain. This deck uses its commander for card advantage before executing Displacer Kitten combos. Kevin's opening hand contains a Mana Vault, Fiery Islet, Ancient Tomb, Mana Crypt, Lotus Petal, Jeweled Lotus, and a Metal Worker. Next, we have Kyle, piloting Kennen, Bonder Prodigy. This deck seeks to use its commander for mana advantage while flipping large game-ending creatures onto the battlefield. Kyle's opening hand contains an Incubation Druid, Neoform, Chrome Mox, Lanor Elves, Island, Spire of Industry, and his London Mulligan is an island. After that, we have Def Cat, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom, Ludovic Opus. This deck, known as Blue Farm, seeks to gain advantage through its commanders before winning through Oracle, Breach, and Brain Freeze. Def Cat's opening hand contains an Underworld Breach, Imperial Seal, Gamble, Plateau, Simeon Spirit Guide, Lotus Petal, and a Vampiric Tutor. Finally, we have Catherine, piloting Shorkai, Genesis Engine. This deck slows down opponents through stacks before polymorphing into Holebreaker Horror to combo off and win the game. Catherine's opening hand contains a Mana Vault, Arcane Signet, Trick Bind, Counterbalance, Dispel, Ottawara Soaring City, and an Azorius Signet. If you enjoy this content, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified of when we publish more. Without further ado, let's kick off this vivacious Velvety Vicarious video. Kevin won the Choking Challenge and gets to start us off. Kevin draws a card for turn and plays an Inventor's Fair. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Metal Worker. Kevin passes. Kyle draws and plays a Spire of Industry. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Neoform. He casts an Incubation Druid and ends his turn. Def Cat draws and plays a Plateau. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards an Imperial Seal. Def Cat ends his turn. Catherine draws and plays an Ottawara Soaring City as her land for turn. She casts a Mana Vault. She casts an Azorius Signet. She casts a Cursed Totem. Kyle sinks his head as Catherine ends her turn. During his upkeep, Kevin loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Fiery Islet. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He cracks it and taps his Fiery Islet to help cast his commander, Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. He casts a Lotus Petal. Joyra triggers and he draws. He casts a Mishra's Bobble and draws again. He casts a Mana Vault and draws a card. He casts an Snaring Bridge. Joyra triggers and, in response, Def Cat cracks his Lotus Petal to help cast Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses 2 life. Then Kevin draws and Ensnaring Bridge resolves. He cracks his Mishra's Bobble looking at the top card of Def Cat's library. With no other actions, he passes the turn. During Kyle's upkeep, Kevin draws through Mishra's Bobble. Kyle draws and plays a Waterlog Grove. He taps his Spire of Industry and Waterlog Grove to help cast his commander, Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. He casts a Lanor Elves and ships the turn to Def Cat. Def Cat draws and exiles a Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts a turn 2, Underworld Breach. <laughs> With no answers, Breach resolves. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He cracks it, discards his hand, and adds 3 blue. He escapes Brain Freeze from his graveyard with all copies targeting himself, milling 9. He escapes LED again and cracks it for 3 more blue. He escapes Brain Freeze again, milling 15. He escapes LED and cracks it for 3 black. He escapes Thassa's Oracle. It enters, and with the trigger on the stack, he escapes Tainted Pact, exiling his library. 
Oracle's trigger resolves, and Devcat wins the game. Wow, a turn two win. What a crazy game. The team wanted another shot, so they win again. In this game, Kevin brings back Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, and his opening hand contains an Urza Saga, Force of Will, Flusterstorm, Mana Crypt, Command Tower, Rhystic Study, and a Glimmer Void. Kyle brings back Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy, and his opening hand contains a Mystic Snake, Mox Amber, Brainstorm, Chain of Vapor, Elvish Mystic, Forest, and an Island. Deathcap brings back Tim to the Weaver and Krom Ludovic's Opus, and his opening hand contains a Sarah Ascendant, Mystic Remora, Gemstone Caverns, Misty Rainforest, Windfall, Underworld Breach, and a Plateau. Catherine brings back Shorkai Genesis Engine, and her opening hand contains a Hallowed Fountain, Counterbalance, Enlightened Tutor, Polluted Delta, Mana Confluence, an offer you can't refuse, and a Polymorph. And Kevin gets to start us off. But Defcat has a pregame action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Plateau. Kevin draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Turn 1, Rhystic Study. The table sighs, and Kevin passes. Kyle draws and plays a Forest. He casts an Elvish Mystic. Rhystic triggers, and Kevin draws. Kyle passes. Defcat draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Sarah Ascendant. Rhystic triggers, and Kevin draws. He casts a Mystic Remora, and Kevin draws again. With nothing else, Defcat ships the turn. Catherine draws and plays a Hallowed Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. Catherine passes. During his upkeep, Kevin wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays an Urza Saga as his land for turn, getting its first counter. He casts a Basalt Monolith. Remora triggers, and Defcat draws. Kevin ships the turn to Kyle. Kyle draws and plays an Island. He casts his commander, Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. Rhystic triggers, and Kevin draws. He casts a Finehorn Elves, paying the Rhystic tax. Kyle ends his turn. During his upkeep, Defcat pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Kevin with Sarah Ascendant. Kevin takes it, and Defcat gains 6. Defcat ends his turn. At the end of Defcat's turn, Catherine casts an Enlightened Tutor. Mystic and Mystic Trigger, and Kevin and Defcat draw. Then Catherine fetches up a Blind Obedience onto the top of her library. The turn moves to Catherine. Catherine draws and plays a Polluted Delta. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. She casts Blind Obedience. Mystic and Mystic Trigger, and Kevin and Defcat draw. Obedience resolves, and Catherine passes to Kevin. During his upkeep, Kevin loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays an Island for turn. He casts his commander, Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, into play tap through Blind Obedience. He casts an Arcane Signet. Remora triggers, and Defcat draws. Joyra triggers, and Kevin draws. Then Arcane Signet enters the battlefield tapped. He casts a Soul Ring, and both draw again. He casts a Voltaic Key, and both draw again. Unfortunately, since Blind Obedience makes all of its artifacts intertapped, he is unable to continue and passes, discarding to hand size. Kyle draws and casts a Mox Amber. Mystic and Rhystic trigger, and Kyle pays for both. Amber enters tapped through Blind Obedience, and Kyle moves to combat. He attacks Defcat with Kennen. Defcat takes it, and Kyle passes. At the end of Kyle's turn, Defcat casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Blind Obedience, paying the Rhystic tax. Blind Obedience bounces, and Catherine doesn't continue the chain. The turn moves to Defcat. During his upkeep, Defcat casts Mystical Tutor, Mystic Triggers, and Kevin draws. Then Defcat fetches up a Brain Freeze onto the top of his library. He lets his Mystic Remora die and draws for turn. He plays a Command Tower. He casts a Chrome Mox, Mystic Triggers, and Kevin draws. Chrome Mox resolves, and Defcat imprints Tasha's hideous laughter. He casts Underworld Breach, Mystic Triggers, and Kevin draws. In response, Kevin casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card. In response, Defcat casts Snapback for its alternate cost, exiling a blue card, targeting Joyra. Mystic Triggers, and Kevin draws again. Joyra bounces and, still in response, Defcat casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. Rhystic triggers and Kevin draws again. With no other answers, Force of Will counters Underworld Breach. Defcat moves to combat and attacks Kyle with Sarah Ascendant. Kyle takes it and Defcat gains 6. With nothing else, Defcat passes the turn. Catherine draws and plays a Mana Confluence. She casts Counterbalance. Rhystic triggers and Kevin draws. Counterbalance resolves and Catherine ends her turn. During his upkeep, Kevin loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and in his first main phase, Urza Saga triggers. In response, Kevin activates Saga, creating a construct. He then sacrifices Saga and fetches up a Graft Digger's Cage onto the battlefield. He activates Voltaic Key, untapping Basalt Monolith. He recasts Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. Counterbalance triggers and Catherine reveals a Calamity's Wake. Then Joyra resolves. He casts Mox Opal. Joyra triggers and Kevin draws. He casts Urza's Bobble and draws again. He casts Cloud Key and draws. It enters and Kevin names artifacts. He casts Chromatic Sphere and draws a card. He casts Jeweled Lotus and draws again. He plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He taps it to cast Mystic Forge. Joyra triggers and he draws. All through, Kevin passes. At the end of Kevin's turn, Kyle casts Chain of Vapor targeting Graft Digger's Cage. Rhystic triggers and Kevin draws. Cage bounces and Kevin doesn't continue the chain. Kevin discards the hand size and the turn moves to Kyle. Kyle draws and casts a Brainstorm. Rhystic triggers and Kevin draws. Then Kyle draws three and puts two back on top. He plays a Hinterland Harbor as his land for turn. He casts Worldly Tutor. 
Ristic triggers and Kevin draws again. Then Kyle fetches up a Seedborn Muse onto the top of his library. He activates Kennen, looking at the top five, putting Seedborn Muse onto the battlefield. Ready to get the ball rolling, Kyle gives the turn to Defcat. Kyle and taps with Defcat through Seedborn. Defcat draws and plays a Luxury Suite. He casts a Windfall, Ristic triggers and Kevin draws. In response, Kyle casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Everyone knows that this game is now in real bad shape if this resolves and discusses what to do next. Counterbalance triggers and Catherine decides to ignore the trigger. In response, Kevin activates Mystic Forge, exiling the top card of his library. He also cracks his Jeweled Lotus. He cracks his Urza's Bobble, looking at a random card in Kyle's hand. With nothing else, Cyclonic Rift resolves, bouncing opponents' non-land permanents. Then when Frawl resolves, everyone discards their hand and draws 21 cards. Defcat casts Mox Opal. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Ristic Study. In response, Kyle casts an Offer You Can't Refuse. Ristic is countered and Defcat creates two treasures. He casts an Esper Sentinel. He casts a Malevolent Hermit. He casts Silence. In response, Catherine taps her Mana Confluence to cast Swan Song, targeting Silence. Esper triggers and Defcat draws. Silence is countered and Defcat creates a 2-2 bird. Next, he casts Calling the Weak, sacrificing Malevolent Hermit as an additional cost, adding four black. He casts Wheel of Fortune. Everyone discards their hands and draws seven. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Sea of Clouds. He casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards an offer you can't refuse. He casts Cabal Ritual with Threshold, adding five black. He flashes back Savine's Reclamation, targeting Underworld Breach in his graveyard. Underworld Breach returns to the battlefield, Savine's copies returning Lion's Eye Diamond to the battlefield. He cracks his LED, discards his hand, and adds three blue. He casts Benevolent Geist, Force Disturbed Cost from his graveyard. He escapes LED five times, exiling 15 cards and cracking it each time for blue. He escapes Brain Freeze with a high enough storm count to mill out each opponent's library. Since all of his spells can't be countered, Brain Freeze resolves. Death Cat passes, sacrificing Underworld Breach. One by one, each opponent attempts to draw from an empty library, loses, and Death Cat wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fun set of games tonight. Congrats to Death Cat on both of his wins. He showed once again why this deck is just so strong. In game one, he wowed everyone by pulling off a turn two win with Underworld Breach. Usually Breach requires a bit of setup before an attempt is made like this, but Defcat had the right setup and knew the exact math it took to execute his combo. In game two, the windfall was going to be strong, but ended up being devastating to the table. The table decided that their greed to also get 21 cards spelled their defeat as Defcat used his high card quality to turn it into a victory. The most viable card in tonight's game, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Windfall. Windfall is strong, sure, but not even Wheel of Fortune can perform what Windfall was able to pull off tonight. The ability to turn lots of cards into even more cards for 3 mana was so strong and it really paid off tonight. Well that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.